Hey everyone, Professor Danny. In this video, I'm accompanied by Alex the Prodigy, who's going to be my assistant. And in this segment, we're going to talk about stand-up in Jiu-Jitsu and the first basics for the engagement position. Okay, so in Jiu-Jitsu, as well as in Judo, the engagement position is one of the most important things in stand-up, okay? So we refer to this as kumikata, which means fighting grips, okay? That's the engagement position of how I'm going to hold on to my opponent when he's in front of me by grabbing his jacket. Now, there's two different stances and posture we're going to use. The first one is this one right here. Migi, which means right, shizentai, natural standing posture. Okay, your natural standing stance. Migi Shizentai. And the other one is going to be with the left. Hidari Shizentai. My elbow position is going to be near my own body. And I'm grabbing my opponent's gi and holding his elbow like this. And in this Migi stance, is going to be the same thing. Elbows bent and relaxed. Hand grasps the lapel and the left hand near the elbow. Okay, I'll show you in a second with Alex. Sometimes we'll have a natural stance here, neutral. And other times, into our offensive stance, we'll also have it crouched down like this. Okay, the reason they do this is for defensive posture or to set up counterbalancing to defend or even start up throws for attacks. This is also referred as jigotai in Japanese. Now, I'm going to borrow Alex to show you guys how we actually use this in real time on an opponent. So we're both going to have this lead. Bring your right in front. This is called Migi Shizentai. And I'm going to grab onto his jacket with my right lead. And he's going to do the same. Now with the left hand, I'm going to grip just behind near the elbow right here. So one is on the jacket and one is on the sleeve. And he does the same thing as I do. Right? So now... We both have this type of gripping. That's the kumikata. That's the neutral startup position. We're going to change the view for a second here, so you guys can see. So this one is grabbing at the elbow, and this one is grabbing at the lapel. This is referred to as the lapel right here. So I grab here. Sometimes, if Alex just lowers his arm so you guys can see, sometimes I like to grip here. And other times, we'll grab a little bit more near the armpit. So what we're going to do is we're going to bundle up the gi and grip like this as such. I like this grip as well. Why is this? Because sometimes I have a better control. If I need to pull Alex or raise him up, I can do so by having a better leverage here. As opposed to if I'm gripping here, this is good to push and pull, but if I try to raise him up, I'm just undressing him. Okay? So now, once we engage there, I'm going to have this grip. Notice how Alex is holding near the elbow. This is our startup position, okay? This is how we grip. Now, the defensive grips or offensive grips are going to differ as how I'm going to flick the wrist, okay? So sometimes, if I want to get a little bit more offensive, for example, if I want to pull, I'm going to torque this way to bring him towards me. See that pop? And other times, if I see that my opponent's walking towards me now, I'm going to use this type of grip for defensive type of grip. So if he walks towards me, I use the palm. See how I jam his body? So these are different types of tactics you're going to use during the kumikata game. Now, there's different types of grips where we also grip behind the neck here. Okay, I call this the slapping grip. But basically, sometimes we use the thumb inside the collar. Traditionally, that's how it's taught. I don't like using the thumb behind the collar here simply because most of the times, especially at the beginning of the match, when you're going to grab, the gi is very snug here behind the neck. So it's hard to insert the thumb, all right? If I see that the gi is loose, perfect. So what I'll do is the slap. That means like this, I'll just do it gently. It's you slap behind the opponent's back. The reason why we slap is I want to be able to grab the material right behind the back and grip right here. If you look as a close-up, most gis have a seam here. There's always two lines. That's to strengthen the material, strengthen that cotton, okay? So the weave that's going to be here is going to be a nice gripping place for my fingers to grab, okay? So once I get to this, 
Now I can start to curl, and if you look here, there's a nice placement for me to lean on my grip. So this is another type of grip. Now, these gripping, if you're starting out in jiu-jitsu, you're probably wondering, what's the difference between each one? Well, here's one. If I grab near the armpit here, I explained that I can pull him much easier. If I grab at the lapel, I can also pull, but this one will be used more to cross over, okay? If I grab behind him, this one will bring his body weight down. So once I'm here, I bring it a little bit lower. But I need to be careful because I don't want to open up for single leg shots. Now, the grip that's on the arm, if he's holding my lapel, I don't want it here. A lot of times people will hold here. This is okay if I want to set up how I want to break the grip. But if I need to be offensive and not defensive, I need to control more at the elbow. Why is that? If I'm controlling here in a kumikata position, and let's say, for example, I want to go for osotogari, okay? I need this elbow control. So as I'm going to step in, I'm also going to bring his elbow towards his body. So as I step in here, one, and now I can go for my troll, okay? So the elbow control is also very important. A lot of times people think holding anywhere is not important. They'll just have this hand dangling loose. It's critical to control this one, okay? Now, keep going. From this position, I can also choose, for example, to make him step forward. So as I pull him forward, now I could set up different takedowns, okay? Now maybe I want his left foot in front. As I pull him forward, I'll switch to this grip. Once I control here, now I can go in for a different type of throw. For example, if I go in for my throw, I can pull him in easily with this type of control, okay? That's one technique. Different types of grips will differ according to different types of throws you want to set up, okay? So I talked about if I want to move into him, where I'm going to grip. If I want to move forward or turning into a throw, I'm going to use a different type of pull, all right? So how are you going to control the engagement position at the startup is super important, okay? In the future videos, we're going to show a couple of different throws we like to use, but for this video, I just wanted to talk about the engagement position and where you should put your hands. Now, a couple of no-nos are this. Sometimes you'll see people grabbing here, two hands on the collar, all right, like a street fight. This is no control right now, okay? Uh, another type of control is maybe sometimes people control two sleeves like this to try to keep the hands away, okay? These are not types of grips we want to use. So number one, as a recap, Alex can hold my collar. You can also bundle up right here near the armpit and have a better control. And on the elbow, it's on the outside right here, okay? Never on the forearm. Sometimes we'll bundle up in front as well. This is also good. All right, but I personally prefer on the outside here. So the way you're gonna do this is, once again, there's a seam here. So I'm gonna pull all the slack out until I can see his bicep. Once I see that everything is snug here, now I have a lot of material to grab onto right here. It's like a rope. And I use all four fingers underneath and I lock the thumb on top, one and two. So you're gonna turn upwards, almost like the pinky goes towards the ceiling right here. And this is a good control. The idea is I want to use a clamp behind his elbow. If he tries to remove the engagement, I want his arm to be stuck. So when he engages here and we grab like this, if he decides to remove his right arm, I want him to be stuck inside his own jacket by holding here. As opposed to if I was just holding like this or here, I'm going to have zero control. So these positions are super important when we're starting out in jiu-jitsu. This is not a super huge technique video about throwing techniques but it's the most important thing. It's almost like saying, I'm gonna teach you how to box and how to throw all the punches, but you never learn to keep your hands up from the starting position, all right? So if the hands are behind your back, none of your punches are gonna be very effective. The same thing goes in judo and jiu-jitsu for stand-up. If I don't know how to engage the positions with my grips, all of my throws and takedowns are now useless once again, all right? So this is the starting position of how the match will start. So we're here, we'll bow, and then it'll start right here, right? So sometimes we don't have a grip, but eventually something will connect and I'll have to grab those grips once again. Okay, I need to control where it is. Maybe I want to step in for the uchigari, right? I need to control the elbow. Maybe I was going into this position here where I'm gonna throw. It doesn't really matter what you decide to do. The idea is 
You need to position your hands first, the engagement position of your hands, gripping in other words, as well as your posture, which are your feet. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this instructional video on stand-up fighting for jiu-jitsu as well as judo. Make sure to leave us a thumbs up, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more jiu-jitsu videos coming your way. Until next time, guys. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.